walk step by step yeah. but i'm on a different page hey guys welcome back to another little mini vlog so this is gonna be um a reaction video um i'm gonna be posting the link to the shade room in the description box down below you guys can go ahead and check out all the lives and um get your own idea of what exactly is going on so i'm reacting to the whole russell simmons versus his ex-wife kumora lee simmons versus his daughter akoi lee um this came out all over social media a few hours ago and i believe it all started when what ming lee i think it was um wished her mother happy father's day um and then it just kind of imploded from there um, I believe Russell Simmons came on. He had some things to say. And then the daughter and the mother just went in. Um, I listened to a little bit of it. I am going to be playing a little bit of um, what Kamora Lee had to say. And as well as her daughter. So you guys can hear from them um, exactly you know, how they feel and what's happening. So we're going to do a little bit of a background just in case... You know, some of you may not be familiar with who these people are. And for those of you who are in, like, my age group, your 40s, late 30s, all of that, you guys will remember Kimora Lee Simmons. You guys will remember Russell Simmons, um, Run DMC, all of that. The Brother, the reality TV shows, Run's World, all of that stuff. This is where I became familiar with the family. Kimora Lee Simmons, <coughs> excuse me. Um, she was really famous back in the day, um, like with the Tyra Banks type of crew. Um, and she was always, you know, an, a very strong businesswoman. Um, I know her from mostly Baby Fat. Um, everybody loved Baby Fat. I, like, when my daughter was born, most of her closet was, like, baby fat stuff. I used to go crazy over the baby fat baby stuff. Um, back then, you couldn't get those things to buy over here. So, um, you'd, you'd have to, like, travel to New York, um, go on bus trips, shopping trips to go ahead and get the baby fat and the fat farm and all of that stuff. So, they really were like um a multi-million dollar family black owned all that good stuff and you know back then that was kind of like their heyday and they were they were living their best life um now the marriage the marriage like you know like a lot of marriages you know they didn't they didn't stand the test of time they eventually got divorced but i always was of the belief that especially the youngest daughter because she looked like him the most um i always felt that she and him were closest i felt like the bigger daughter ming was closer to her mother um and she looked like her mom too and she had more of the model-esque type um like she you could tell she was gonna follow in her mother's footsteps and the mom used to always bring them on to the runway when they had like the baby fat fashion shows and stuff in new york fashion week they would always walk the runway um and stuff like that but as per the relationship with like russell simmons and his girls like i always thought he had like a really good relationship with them um <clears throat> he just always really seemed him and his brother because I remember I used to watch Run's House too. And he, um, he always seemed like the kinder father compared to his brother. Well, a, you know, according to his ex-wife and his children, um, he's like a narcissist. And like he, you know, he cut them off financially. Just very bitter over the divorce. Um, Kumora Lee had a lot to say about his financials situation um she basically said that she's been bankrolling all of his business ventures for years that he's actually in reality broke and i'm sure when they say broke you know when millionaires say broke they mean like one million in the bank they don't mean broke broke um and she's basically saying he's not as financially well off as he portrays that she's basically the financial backer to his lifestyle um and this is all coming from 
he did an interview with DJ Academics a while back and he must have been on there talking about how rich he was and all of this stuff and she was bas she's basically saying that is not true um, and a whole bunch of other stuff um, that she's been trying to get she's been going to law enforcement with his threats that he's been sending threatening text messages all type of like stuff and she's just basically saying you know please leave us alone and all of that now all of this stuff is alleged of course there's his side of things um and i'm sure i think he did put out a live or something i'm sure somebody will put it up somewhere but i just wanted to react to this number one it was like right or father's day was just yesterday right and um i know that is a very traumatic time for a lot of people um there are a lot of issues surrounding that and for this to come out it just seems like it was just one of those like that comment that the daughter made really triggered it off like these things have all this hurt and things has been coming from years and years and years of trying to portray this perfect family they were like the perfect rich black family um there weren't many rich black families on reality tv on tv that was non-fictional <clears throat> so when uh excuse me when they were on tv it was like I remember tuning to BT every night just to see, you know, the black reality TV shows. And it was just like they, they really, they tried to portray more of a perfect family than actually runs house. They were actually very open. You could kind of see everything that was going on in terms of the kids, their struggles, what they were going through. All of that stuff wasn't like, you know, washed over. But um, when it came to like Russell Simmons and his family was always very, everything was very prim and proper and bougie and rich and just, you know, perfect. And I think for a long time they had to struggle to keep up that image and now it's just all pouring out. Like the daughter is on live crying, the ex-wife is on live crying. There's like a lot of trauma and a lot of hurt. Um, the daughter is making accusations that like he holds he holds them financially hostage, right? If they didn't, he they didn't side with him in the lawsuit against their mother. <clears throat> um, if, excuse me, if they didn't agree with him when he was, you know, calling her names and doing, you know, stuff divorced parents do. It's toxic. It's bitter. There's hurt on both sides. So I'm pretty sure, like, um, Kumori Lee over the years has said things about him that were not, you know, in the best of light and all that. So I'm not really going to get into that stuff. That stuff is for a therapist. A lot of people on the live were saying like, you know, you shouldn't be on here with this family drama. You guys need to go to therapy. All this stuff needs to be talked about, unpacked and healed in a healing environment. I don't think the internet is going to be the place, but you can't really tell people where and when to break down. Um, it's the same thing Regina Carter went through when she had her moment on social media. People didn't understand it. And it's because you don't grow up in that generation. Literally, they tell the internet everything. It's like growing up talking to like a computer that talks back. It's just like something that's always been there. And they're used to doing it. So, of course, when something traumatic happens, they come to the internet because that's, that's what they know. Um, so when people, when people don't want to hear that, you know, they only want to hear the good stuff with celebrities. They don't want to hear about your problems because they have their own problems. The internet is a refuge where people come to hide from real life. And if they're hiding from their own problems, they don't want to sit here and watch you cry about yours. So that's why you don't get any kind of that warm, fuzzy, it's going to be okay all the time. Because a lot of people just be on here hiding from their own pain, hiding from their own misery. And you're just piling on top of it with your misery. So like they don't respond in a comforting way. Um, but there were a lot of supportive people, um, you know, this is sad. Um, and I think the dad was also in the comments under the live, like, you know, apologizing and whatever the case may be, but it's all like, it's just all like, wow. People think that, um, you know, these people have money and they live this perfect life. And here you have this woman who's a millionaire telling you like, She's basically had to do it as a single mother the, um, that he walked away financially. He cut them off right when they're about to finish school. It's all very calculated. He did it right around graduation. You know, 
um, right knowing that they'd have a whole bunch of things to pay for and like she said he did it so that she would have to bear the brunt of um, the financial responsibility and you get that a lot with men I'm not even gonna lie to you um, you get that a lot where they use money to punish um, they don't pay child support they think they're hurting you when it's actually their kids that you know if some women because there are women who are like yeah when you get it when your daddy send it you know there are women who live by that code whether it's right or wrong that is how they run their household um and when guys think they're spiting the female it's your children that sometimes you're spiting you know what i mean um so yeah holding people financially hostage is something that you know affluential parents like to do they pull they hold the purse strings we've seen it in every hollywood movie um, if you don't do as I say, I'll take away this, I'll take away that, I'll, I'll put, I'll blackball you in the industry, I'll do this, I'll do that. And that's exactly what his daughter is accusing him of doing, that he's threatened to destroy her career, that she'll never work in the beauty industry, modeling industry again, um, that he has vowed to destroy her career. Um, and just, you know, just all very toxic and very not healthy but let me let me know what you guys think down below if you're familiar with this if you heard what's happening like i said i'm gonna leave the link to the shade room in the description box you guys can go over there and check out the whole thing um and now i'm gonna just play you a little snippet of um both of the female um I mean females both of the ladies um Kimora Lee and her daughter okoy Lee both of them so you guys can hear a little bit of what they have to say and of course you guys can always check out the rest of it on the shade room so thank you guys so much for watching um don't forget to like comment and subscribe but let me know what you guys think about this video down below um is russell simmons being a toxic parent that is what he's being accused of that he is emotionally abusing his children um do you guys agree or disagree um if you know the story let me know in the comments down below and until then stay up and stay blessed um we'll catch up with you guys in another video and definitely definitely stay safe guys deuces and so one day he just kind of cut the kids off there was no more money coming in no more like allowance quote unquote allowance i think he probably did that just to double up the expenses on me which is no problem i stepped up i did it but when he did this, it was around um, just before finals and graduation. It was some months ago, just before finals and graduation. And he did it without telling the kids or talking to the kids or anything. He did it, it's funny, after he did an interview with, um, I heard some clips from an interview with uh, this young man. I don't know, but I see him a lot. I think his name is Academic or DJ Academic. Oh, happy Juneteenth, you guys. We're doing all this on Juneteenth. Come on, let it go. Let it out. Um, so I saw in that clip, that was some months ago too. You can go and reference it and find it, where he told this guy, he was on and on about this guy, and I think it was about old school hip hop heads and how you should honor them, which I believe you should. Uh, but he was saying to the guy, like, I'm so rich. I got this and I got that and I'm this and that. None of that could be further from the truth. You know, he has turned around and then again, I have records and evidence of this where he's told the kids in writing we have it text messages i'm broke i this i that i can't you know go get it from your mom now meanwhile i have been financially carrying this person probably for the last at least 10 years myself and my ex-husband again this is all proven with receipts so if whatever somebody doesn't like what i'm saying you know we could talk about it we can come we can open up our receipts i, I love it i love receipts um but i've taken care of this person to the tune of many, many, many millions of dollars to help with their bills, their overhead, their companies that they run into the ground, their unsuccessful bids, all of their stuff. We went through this divorce, I don't know, 20 years ago, 20 some odd years ago. So this is not a situation, again, you can get receipts, you can go see where they say like, oh, kids been brainwashed, but we've been fine up until these past several years. So, you know, what happened? All of a sudden now the kids are brainwashed. All of a sudden now these young women who are grown women are babies. You know, you they, they have their own relationship with you. You have their, your own non-existent relationship with them. I'm just asking that you please leave us alone. You know, I've tried to go to 
lawyers and get help. I've tried to show all the crazy texts I've had to block. Like, you do crazy shit. Like send pic, pic, f- flowers to yourself and take a picture and send post it on the gram and tell everybody I sent you flowers. Again, I have receipts of all of this. I have receipts from your office saying that you sent flowers to yourself. Okay, guys. So that was Kamora Lee. That's what she had to say. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and add in the clip from Okoye Lee. And you guys can hear what she has to say. Um, she has some very disturbing things to say about the relationship with her father. Um, and it's just really sad. It's really emotional. So I'm just going to let you guys know from before you watch it. Um, she does become very emotional. Like I said, I'm not going to play the full clip. Um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of give you guys a little bit, just a brief snippet of it. And for the full clips for both of these lives you guys can definitely check it out in the shade room remember these are these videos are just for reaction purposes only so i will always link the original content creator down in the description box so you guys can definitely check out their work and you know get a full perspective of everything that we're reacting to so stay tuned i'm gonna post her clip next <sighs> He sent someone at the middle of the night to, like, take her some papers to, like, sign away her inheritance or whatever. And then she was like, should I be signing this? And I was like, what? He, like, sends people to threaten her. And you know Ming is a calm person. No, please stop with the bullshit about I hope you find peace and privacy and this is venting. I have been dealing with this my whole life. This is not new. It's not new drama. I already live in the drama, so now I'm just sharing. This is not... There's no therapy you can go to with someone who weaponizes the fact that you don't want to go public, right? Because when he posts something and then I don't respond, because I'm like, you know, I don't want to have drama. And so he's been weaponizing that we don't want to... That we don't want to um have drama. I'm not... A, like, I'm... <sighs> I care about my family. I don't like to have this out there. But he uses that against you. Well, what are you going to do about it? You're not going to say something. So now I'm saying something. And if you're going to say one more thing about, like, you should be in private in therapy. He, get off, please. Because I'm telling you, he uses that against me. And I'm not going to have it. And my sister and my mother. And I'm not going to have it. And he's going to spin the whole narrative about, oh, your mom turned you against me. I am very independent-minded. You can ask my mom. She has an issue with me every day since I was four. I want to cut my hair. I want to move out. I want to do this. And she's like, we negotiate all the time. I'm not the type to like, whatever you say, mommy. I'm like kind of an independent individual in that way. She would know. She raised me. It was a lot of work. So he's going to say, she t like, she's not with me. I'm in New York. Like I said, staying with a friend because he will not even give me a hundred bucks for rent which is fine i'm saving but like all that money you're crying he doesn't give me a dollar not that you need it you know every people work people are 18 20 they don't have parental support my mom supports me yeah but that's all i really have to say i guess I think I covered all the points. It's been many years, so don't tell me this is just drama that just started. I've been living in it. It's been terribly directed at the children. It's not like I could just stay out of it. We tried. I would be in school living. Happy Father's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Just, And my mom, if I asked a question, she'd be like, this is not your concern. But any time I allowed him into my life, even to have lunch, he would start yelling about what a t like, tell your mom to do that. And I was like, I can't, what? Cursing, saying terrible words. If you don't agree with him immediately, it's immediately cursed out, foul things. Like, if you don't immediately say, oh my God, I hate my mother too, like, you're in trouble. So... Don't tell me that this just started. I, 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 like, I don't really care if I seem crazy because I know that I'm not. And like I said, I will release every email. I'll release my entire WhatsApp log because I have behaved as well as I could have at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have behaved as well as I could. Please give me some space. I don't want to talk about that. Well, I don't want to hear you say that about my mom. Could you please stop? Please don't call my friends. Please don't call my boyfriend. Please don't call my friends at school. Please don't DM my friends at school on Instagram to harass me. 
Please don't threaten my job. Please don't send people to threaten my sister. I have done the best I possibly could. And I mean that. On my own. Like, I, it's not... Because he and my mom have had disagreements. I'm not, I'm not involved in them. But he forces me to be involved. Okay, guys. So that was um, Okoye Lee. Um, and, you know, she said a lot. She had a lot to say. And I just hope that for the betterment of their family, that um, they can, you know, sit down and address this stuff as a family and go through the healing process therapy is definitely needed in this situation um they need like a mediator or somebody who can just be detached from the situation and help them get through this because this is a lot um i don't know i don't want to i'm trying to refrain from judging because um that's a virgo thing and i don't want to do that because we don't know his side of the story i mean i did he did release a live but i didn't i didn't watch it so i'm sure more will come out in the following you know in the hours and days to come and everybody will get you know to have their say but what i do know is that um this stuff is very this trauma runs deep and it needs it needs a lot of help um to to kind of get this family beyond this. Um, the daughter had a lot more things to say. I think there's another live where she's talking about her concern for his mental health and all this other stuff. It's a lot. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and play the clip so you guys can kind of get an idea, hear from them in their own words. Um, like I said before, if you guys want to watch the full clips, if you guys want to see all the everything that's you know surrounding this, you guys can definitely check out the Shade Room. Um, I'm going to post the information in the link. Um, I'm sorry, the link in the description down below. And you guys can go ahead and check it out. So, thank you guys so much again for watching. For those of you who made it to the end, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, for those of you who are subscribed, thank you so much for doing so. We appreciate you guys. Um, stay up and stay blessed. Until next video. And definitely, definitely stay safe. Deuces.